Hello, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to the fifth of a series of ten videos that I'm doing on Rhino modeling. And today we're going to be doing a session on surfaces and the creation of solids as well, and how, how those are created. We're also going to do a little bit of work on um, analyzing those solids and just checking that they're, uh, they are correct. So um, I've got uh, my properties pad open here. I'm going to use that in a minute. And the first thing I'm going to do is just explain a little bit about the topology of how Rhino operates um, and creates solids and surfaces, points, lines, so on and so forth. There's kind of a hierarchy in the background that operates, and, and it starts with information regarding, um, uh, you know, from, a, from, the, from the lowest order. The lowest order of information uh, of, a, of an object within Rhino is a point. Um, a point such as this one here that I've just created and I've moved that's now highlighted. Um, and this point has information about it. You can see in the properties uh, that whenever I move it, you, know, you can see that the properties changes here. I can find out the details of this by, um, I've got two screens open here, which is why you can, uh, you can not see this popping up as it goes. This point here that I've created has got um, this information attached to it within Rhino, and this is, the, this is the information that Rhino stores within every point. And you can see that the Cartesian coordinates are here. Uh, this point is at minus 1.6x and uh, positive 4.9y. Um, and uh, it has, um, so it's up on the y, it's, it's negative on the x, and it's zero on the z, so it doesn't have any z height. If I gave it some height, if I close that, and gave it some height here, and I show the details here, you'll see that it's got three coordinates, uh, giving it an x, y, z Cartesian placement. And all that information is stored for every single point that Rhino creates. And that can be a point on a polyline, it can be a point on a control point curve, uh, it can be you know any any point um, on a surface or so on and so forth that is uh, that is every single object every single point object contains this amount of information uh, which is fair amount to be stored in the the, the, the software at any one time and it 's one of the reasons why rhino is quite memory hungry um, <clears throat> it's a very you can see as well by the details there the um, the accuracy of the uh, data is is very precise i mean it 's down to five decimal places here. Um, so and it keeps going as well. Um, so there's there's a high degree of accuracy. Rhino is a precision modeler, so um, it has to store that amount of information in it at any one time. Um, right. Uh, so that's a point. If you were to create two points, um, there's two points in space, and then uh, if I'm going to have my point um, on here, make sure my point is is snapped, which it is. There it is. Uh, and I'm going to draw a line between these two points. Point to point. Enter, and you've created a line. And this line has information about it too. Here's the details. Uh, it has a domain, which is its total length. That's what's available. The amount of information, uh, amount of length that's available to it. The line length is the same as the domain. Um, it's a valid curve. You can see Rhino defines that as a curve, even though it's a straight line. That's because everything in Rhino, every straight line in Rhino, or curve in Rhino is considered to be a curve. Uh, this is a degree one curve because it's straight. Um, okay, close that. So that's a curve. You can take a curve though and you can extrude the curve in a straight direction uh, and you can make it into a surface and you do that by the command extrude curve which you can type in here. Extrude, extrude curve, there it is. And this is the curve I want to extrude. Press enter. And I'm going to extrude this in the Z direction. So this is going straight up here. Okay, I could also, if I had the front view, I'd extrude the same curve um, and I could extrude this up the way if I wanted to, okay, as well. <clears throat> so a surface is created from an extrusion. If you, take a, if you take a straight line and you extend that straight line along a vector, this vector is the Z, the Z axis here, uh, you can generate a surface, the appearance of a surface, and that's how Rhino, um, how it generates surfaces. You can if you want to extrude this surface to create a solid and you can do that through the solid tools which are here and this one here is extrude surface uh, and we can extrude this is set to both sides at the moment so I'm just going to change that to both sides equals no and you can extrude this surface and that extrude this extrudes the surface along a normal um, which is the 90 degree point to the plane that's created from the surface so it extrudes along the normal um, and you've created a solid here 
um, from that extrusion. And that's the basic hierarchy of objects in Rhino. There's a further one that's Rhino has added now, which is which is an extrusion, which is which is if I did this and I create a box, you'll see that the box doesn't have any eyes occurs on it. That's because that is defined in Rhino as an extrusion. If I click this and I look at my settings here, give my details here, it will tell you it's an extrusion surface. It's a valid extrusion extrusion surface. So Rhino calculates this as a slight word, it defines this as a slightly different object as an extrusion. This object here is defined as a closed poly surface or as closed solid poly surface and the solid there is the important bit. That is really really important when it comes to um, generating an object from that if you were to 3D print it or something. If I was to explode this object here and then to delete say the top surface here um, and I was to join that ball back up again I'll just join it, it'll only join those two objects, it's joined that and uh, I need to join that to it as well join, there we go join that one please, why are you not joining? join to that, it's not joining, very odd ah, it's because it's the input curve I'm gonna sort that out standard three to four corner points and 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 I'm that's not worked. There's an example of how you need to be very careful when you're picking endpoints in Rhino. I'm now going to join that to that. Join to this. Enter, and I've got one closed poly surface. So if I don't quite, I think I must have moved that object very slightly. Um, I've got the details for that. I have a poly surface with five surfaces, valid poly surface, but this poly surface happens to be open, um, and in other words, it's a vessel, it's got no, it's not capped, in other words. I could cap this by typing in cap. Now, if you were a 3D printer trying to print this object, you wouldn't be able to, because 3D printers require that the surface is has a solid um, thickness. And as we know, in Rhino, all the surfaces are not, they do not have any thickness at all. Their thickness is zero. Uh, there are um, instances, there are, there are perfect instances um, of a, a description of a boundary, so they in, in themselves don't have any thickness whatsoever. Same as a line, a line doesn't have any thickness. When you zoom in on it, it doesn't get any thicker. Exactly the same with a surface. You can zoom in on the edge of the surface, it doesn't get any thicker. And that's because it is defined uh, by its boundary, not by its thickness. So if I was a 3D printer, I wouldn't be able to print this because this object wouldn't actually have any thickness whatsoever, and therefore the extrusion of the, the filament couldn't be um, couldn't be placed in any um, in any place because it doesn't have a, a coordinate to put that. It's got a line. It would probably try, but you wouldn't get a very good result from it. Uh, so solids need to be printed. Solids are, are required for a printer to actually do its job, a 3D printer to do its job. Um, okay, I'm going to delete that now. I'm going to delete these. So that's a little bit about the, the solid typography. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a few ways of... I've shown you how to extrude solids. We can do this. We can do a few of them. But the first thing I'm going to show you is some of the Boolean operation tools and how we can work with solids in order to um, create some simple uh, geometry. Um, and I'm going to go to solid tools here and I'm going to show you these Booleans. But first, before we do that, we're going to just create an extrusion. Uh, I'm going to go to standard view here and I'm going to create a perimeter and I'm going to use my ortho snap here. I'm going to put ortho on, I'm going to start at zero, enter. Uh, I'm going to just make a simple shape here. I'm going to use my S, S track in order to create, I'll just make it a little bit more complicated than this so it's a bit more enjoyable. And um, we're going to go to S track to this point here, int, and then we'll close that line off there. So we have one uh, closed. Uh, line here, it's, its ends have been closed together, and we can now use this to extrude. So I'm going to go to Solid Tools, and this is Extrude uh, Closed Plane of Curve, that's the curve I'm extruding. At the moment I have in the tools, I have Solid equals yes. If I set Solid equals no, you'll see that it will produce a an extrusion without caps. It won't have end caps there. Or I could do the same again, but this time I could say Solid equals yes, and if I do that uh, if I say solid equals yes, if I do that, it will create end caps to the object and I will have an extrusion. And there's that extrusion. <clears throat> I'm also going to create a couple of other objects. I'll create a box and I'll create a spheroid, a sphere form as well, a smaller sphere like that. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, and then I'm also going to copy this object here, my extrusion, copy CVV, and I'm going to put it. Um, 
extrusion, I'm going to put it in a couple of different places. I'll put it up here. I've got ortho on, so I'm going to take ortho off now. And I'm going to put the same object here. as well and I'm going to try and put that away later for later and, and with these three objects here I'm going to um, do some operations on them to show you what's possible with the booleans now a boolean operation these are the booleans here a boolean operation is an addition a subtraction or a union operation this is a, an intersection operation this is a union operation this is an intersection operation this one here is kind of an amalgam of all three of them a boolean split so you can get um, all the different options from that apart from the and option you don't get that it splits it up into its chunks <clears throat> so Boolean union is the first one I'm going to show you. If you uh, intersect these two objects, I'm going to make an intersection between one object and the other object. I'm also going to change my view to x-ray here so you can see inside the object. And what I want you to notice is this uh, intersection here between one object and the next. You can see inside this space, you can clearly see the ball inside the second, uh, inside the the poly surface here. If I do a Boolean union on those two objects, this object and this object enter, that information disappears. So this is a, a destructive process. The information inside that has disappeared and all, all that's left is the external surface, the boundary. N none of the information inside has been reta retained. So that is a Boolean union. The next one is a Boolean difference. I'm going to do that on this one here. I'm going to create the same intersection, roughly, it doesn't need to be precise. I'm going to put it in a different place just to, just to be different. And what I'm going to do is do a Boolean difference on this object. So, press Boolean difference. Read your command bar. Select surfaces or poly surface to subtract from. So this is the thing you want to remain. This is the object that you want to stay as one object, stay as the whole object, not the subtractive object. This is the, the thing you want to stay. And it, then it asks you for confirmation that that's all you want to subtract from. And then you say select poly surfaces to subtract with. Delete input equals yes. Now delete input means that your your original um, surfaces will go. You will only have what's left at the end of it. So this is where you have a destructive process. So quite often you'll see that is set to no. Um, and if that's the case, it's also sticky. That will stay when you next open Rhino. That will be no. Um, I'll keep it as yes just so you can see this happening. But I'll show you what happens later on if you have no. Um, and we're going to cho choose this object as the object we're going to subtract with and press enter when done. And when we do that, you'll see, I'll put it back to shaded so you can see this more clearly, it subtracts one object from the other. Okay? So that's the, that's the Boolean difference or the Boolean subtraction. The final one is the Boolean intersection. So and again, I'm going to create uh, intersection between these two things. I'll do it in the side just for a difference. And I'm going to create a Boolean intersection between these two. So I hit the tool. Select the first set of poly surfaces, press enter when done, or enter for a second set. This is the second set, enter, and what's left is the intersectional space between the two objects. Okay? Basically, though, if I undo that particular one, I'm going to show you how to do this just with the trims. Boolean is basically just a trim function. It's a macro run on several trims. It's a trim and a join. Um, and I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to do a Boolean difference manually just to show you how it works. And it can be done in about four or five clicks, I think. I can't remember the exact number. But I'm going to do a trim. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim here using the trim tool. Select the cutting objects. Well, I'm going to use this object to cut. Okay, enter when done. And the object I'm going to trim is this, the object away. So I'm left in there. If I escape this tool, I'm left with the, um, if I go to, uh, go, not rendered, I'm going to go to ghosted or x-ray, I'll go to x-ray. If I choose the Isaac curve here, you've got this surface here inside and that is inside. If I hide this object here, standard, and hide that, you'll see that hide it, you'll see that there's a surface remaining, okay? I'll unhide that. And you can use that surface to trim the other surface. So we're now going to trim again, trim here, and we're cutting object is this one here, press enter when done. The thing we want to trim is this object here, I'll trim that. You'll notice that the surface is now not an extrusion anymore. It's turned into a poly surface. Um, and I now have two objects together. Um, they're separate. This object and this object are separate. But if I was to join these by pressing join, I now have pretty much the same object as this one here. Um, it's obviously in a different place, but the, um, 
the, the Boolean difference is the same, and that's done through a trim. So every time you do a Boolean difference, what you're actually doing is telling Rhino to do a series of trims and joins in order to, to get the result that you want. Put this back to shaded now. That's rendered, put it back to shaded. There we go. Okay, so that's a Boolean difference. Now there are a few things that you can do wrong, and there's a few in is issues with this that you get. Sometimes you'll have issues with coplanar surfaces, with Rhino not quite recognizing whether one surface needs to be removed from another. You can get this sometimes with, for example, a cone such as this, which is on this, the construction plane. I'm going to hold my shift key down and move it over here. And if I were a Boolean uh, difference that from that, it could sometimes, and it can sometimes, give me issues, um, especially if it cuts the object in half like this one does. So let's try it and see what we get. So I'm going to go to Solid Tools. That's here. Boolean difference. And I'm going to have this object, and I'm going to take away this object. And it hasn't done it uh, that time. I'll try it again. Select, select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. This is this one. Enter. This is this object. Enter. There. It's actually done it. There's no problem with that one. Occasionally, though, you will run into problems with certain surfaces being coplanar. And in, in that instance, you need to fiddle around with uh, the position of the object until it will work. And if it's that that's the issue, you can also try doing a, a, a trim, a manual trim, to see if it's that that's causing the problem. But occasionally, you will run into issues with that. As, as usual, I can't make it do um, a problem when I want it to. It usually comes up with problems when I don't want them to come up. Um, anyway, here we go. There's a couple of other things I want to show you. Paraboloid, and this this is uh, quite important. Um, this describes. I'm going to put this paraboloid here, and I'm going to make sure it has some intersection. So if I look inside it, it has some intersection, and I can actually use this, which is an open surface. I can trim an open surface from, or I can use it to Boolean difference, a chunk from a closed surface. So this is my closed surface. This is my open surface. And I'm going to do a Boolean difference here. Here's Boolean difference. This is the object I want to cut. This is the object I want to cut, cut with. And there you can see that that chops a chunk out of it. And that's because, if I undo that, the space that's being Boolean, the, the um, area, is a closed poly surface itself. So this surface here doesn't have any holes in it. And if I was to move the paraboloid to a position where it would have some holes in it, so say here, for example, um, there, it, it doesn't completely contain this volume. It, the, 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 this volume and this volume are the same. There's no, there's no split here. So this now will not do a Boolean difference. If I try it, I'll show you. That does not do anything. It says Boolean difference failed. Um, helpfully, Rhino gives you no information as to why it failed, because there could be a non multi multitude of reasons why it failed. Okay, so that's Boolean difference, or Booleans generally. Um, and you need to have a play with them and experiment with them to see what you can do. Um, and uh, it's, it, it can be frustrating sometimes, especially when you're doing a number of objects or when the objects are very, very complicated. Sometimes I've had situations where I'm trying to Boolean 50 or 60 objects from another object and the Boolean difference fails probably because it just runs out of memory. Um, so that can happen quite often. It doesn't necessarily tell you why. If you run into that problem, try doing one or two or three until until it, you get consistent results, and then um, you'll 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 probably have some success. Right. So that's uh, that's it for now on booleans and solids. Um, I'm going to uh, ask you to produce a few Boolean um, samples here. So what I want you to do is to create some simple solids and chop some objects from them. Try and make them interesting. I don't know, make some Swiss cheese. Uh, that seems like an obvious thing to do. But you can create quite complicated objects using Booleans, um, and especially if you use the copy and paste tool. You know, control C, control V will, will allow you to create two instances. Um, try um, a number of different um, composites and see what you can come up with uh, for next week. In fact, after the holidays, because the next session we're going to have is after these to break. Okay, I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed that one. I'm going to do another session in a minute on um, how to do fillets. So I'll take you through that section a little bit later on. Thanks very much. Take care and goodbye.